Hi guys, welcome to my final blog where I'll be discussing and reflecting on few coaching sessions. Considering the gym is open to public, my apologies that I couldn't shut the music and also for people interfering while making the video. I'll be discussing today the structure of the session and advantages and disadvantages of my coaching and the facility. As coaches, we all know that most of our work or most of our time is spent planning the session, but sometimes things don't work according to what we have planned. Setting the objective for a training session is the most important. But things in the coaching world can be quite different. In the lecture presented, it was crucial to plan, do and review the session. As you can see, in the training facility that I train, it has different equipment in different part of the gym. And hence, making one entire video of the entire session can be a challenge. Also. Considering we work throughout the day, that's more than at times 12 hours a day. I would also like to know how does my body language looks like at the last session of the day. Hence, what I've done here is taken snippets of few other sessions during the end of the day to reflect how can I can improve or can be at my best by the end of the day. Let's start by defining what is objective. Objective feedback is when an unbiased measured summary of the task is shared to athletes directly and this can be sometimes be a great confidence boost or a ego killer. Different types of feedback. Inferential feedback, real time or instantaneous feedback, immediate feedback, session feedback, and seasonal feedback. There can be different ways of giving feedback to an athlete depending upon at which point in time we are during the session. Coming back to the session. The goal for the session was maintenance as the athlete was traveling for French Open day after tomorrow. We included some jumps, med balls with some hip dominant exercises. Basically, the end goal was to expose the athlete to the entire spectrum of the force velocity curve. We started with pogo jumps then went on doing squat jumps with few strength training exercises. Considering I've coached the athlete a few times, I started with showing the athlete how the jump should be performed and later let her do it as I'm aware that the athlete is not efficient in extending her hips while performing the movement. I was clear in setting objective of how the jump should actually look like with both the athletes.
as we can now see my athlete is performing a strength exercise rack pull we've done this exercise several times but yet she doesn't execute in the way that i want her to hence while she was performing the exercise i gave her real time feedback as to how did the movement look like and how can it be performed more efficiently in the lift there was excessive stress on the neck which let later after the feedback it was improved one thing that i would rather do during this session was to show her or rather give her inferential feedback before lifting the weights this helps the athlete to be in the zone while performing the movement and not thinking about the different cues next movement that we performed was another med ball exercise in which we can see that the athlete lacks hip extension while performing the movement there happened to be a little conflicting situation where the athlete expected me to give her the feedback while performing the movement after giving her appropriate feedback she performed the movement again and this time with more clear picture of how the movement has to be executed in the right manner athlete 2 here in the video even after watching the right way to perform the movement didn't execute the movement as it had to be and this too happened after regressing and practicing the hip hinge and also half kneeling med ball throws for 3 weeks here's the part where i got a little frustrated with the athlete one area that i think i should work on is patience and giving athlete the time to learn a skill especially with people who take time to learn a specific skill once the athlete was efficient in performing the med ball throw she was regressed and was asked to practice hip extension using a theraband we went on doing different hip movement exercises the pull through it's important to note and also this might sound a little silly to give instruction to housekeeping staff not to dust during the client peak hour this might lead to in losing the focus for a particular athlete and break the rhythm this was the last core exercise that we performed an athlete might not know the names of the exercises and hence it's very important either to show or demonstrate a particular movement or rather have it recorded over the phone as the athlete travels quite a bit and remembering the names of different movement can be confusing which i shall definitely consider henceforth the session was finished by giving a brief session feedback the most important message to the athletes was to reflect on what we did in the gym while playing on court there's no point in learning an effective hip hinge if you can't execute the same movement during different movements while playing the sport i've also included a last video of my session to get a fair bit of an idea on how my body language looks like while i'm coaching when i am tired 
and especially by the end of the day. It was surprising for me when I reflected upon this video to see how through my body language it's so easy to make out that I am tired. This can be a great discussion to see how body language might perceive on how the athlete thinks about us and are we really practicing what we are preaching. Thank you.